I'm Colonel Ulysses S. Grant, and I am in Missouri at this time in July of 1861, and <clears throat> I've just finished a day or so ago my first march as a commanding officer. When the 21st Illinois was sworn in on June the 28th, last, uh, we almost immediately got orders to march to Missouri to assist in fighting rebel guerrilla uh, activities in Missouri. And we were to leave on the 3rd of July. Uh, two agents came to my attention. One was the quartermaster general who told Governor Yates that uh, Colonel Grant has turned in the perfect requisition form and forms, he's asked for nothing more nor nothing less than what he needs. There is nothing left out. His is the only such requisition. And I think that comes from my having been a quartermaster in the old army. The other uh, agent that come to my attention was the agent for the Great Western Railroad. And it had a direct line from Springfield, Illinois, Camp Yates here, to Quincy, Illinois, whence we were bound. The agent came out and asked me uh, how many cars I would require. And I said, none. He seemed taken aback at this. And he said, what do you mean, none? I said, I meant none. We're not going to take the cars. Well, what are you going to do? He rather testily demanded, and I said, we're going to march. Those men are going to be marching a great deal in their immediate future, and they might as well get accustomed to doing it now. And we're going to march to Quincy. He went back to Governor Yates and uh, objected to this. Of course he would. He wants the fare for the freight for hauling a a regiment of a thousand men and their equipage. And Governor Yates <clears throat> did not challenge me on that. He told the railroad agent, I expect Colonel Grant knows what he wants and what he's doing. So we uh, did not take the train. Now there, there's some talk that uh, the soldiers said, found out that they were going to send us in cattle cars and freight cars because that's all they could pull together at the time. And uh, they rather testily said, we're soldiers in the United States Army. We're not cattle, nor are we freight. We are going to wait until they get passenger cars for us. And uh, when I heard that, I said, well, then you can walk. And walk we did. On Wednesday, July the 3rd of 1861, at about 11 a.m., the 21st Illinois Regiment Volunteers moved out of Springfield, Illinois, to march to Quincy, Illinois. And uh, we marched about eight miles that first day. Set up uh, camp and uh, for the first time, these men realized that something of what they were getting into, uh, they'd marched eight miles and they had marched in formation and they'd marched well. The problems that I saw were, was inattentive officers, and I will take them to task for that. Not many stragglers of the men, some filching, poaching in gardens as we went by. A chicken or two might have been taken before I was able to put a stop to all of that. But uh, on the whole, I was pleased with the march for that first eight miles. When we went into camp, I had a regular army routine that I had them practice. And one soldier has written since then this information about our going into camp the first night. Uh, I thought it read rather well and was descriptive. I should like to share it with you. The first day's march was commenced about 11 a.m. and reached the first camp around 5 p.m. 
The regiment was halted in column of companies in the woods. Arms were stacked, and when the wagon train came into camp, each company unloaded its wagon, arranged its tents by opening and spreading on the ground. And at one tap of a bass drum, the tents were raised. At two taps with the bass drum, ropes were stretched and tent pins adjusted. At three taps of the bass drum, the stakes were driven and the regiment was under canvas in its first tented field. The instructions for pitching the tents were given by Colonel Grant verbally and as given, repeated by each captain to his men. It was regular army method. The long roll was beaten on the drums, the roll was called and absentees noted. The first day's march was attended with hardships. There were stragglers and absentees and punishment awarded uh, was extra guard duty for both officers and men. The men made their campfires and cooked their first meal in camp and after supper, there were many stories about the first experience of real marching on the first day's march. At seven o'clock, officer's call was sounded, and Colonel Grant talked to the men about the absolute necessity of enforcing respect for the inhabitants of the country through which the regiment was marching, and for their property, and that he would hold the captains of the companies personally responsible for the acts of their men. As I said, we had a little bit of irregular behavior, but I uh, was pleased with what little there was, but I wanted there to be none. And I told my captains in that officer's call, I will hold you personally responsible for the behavior and deportment of the men under your command. The next day, I issued a statement or an order to the uh, officers. Camp Allison, July 6th, 1861. The Colonel commanding regrets that it becomes his duty to notice the fact that some of the officers of this command fell out of ranks yesterday in passing through Jacksonville without authority to do so, and thus whilst the rank and file were guarded most strictly this being the first offense is overlooked, but in the future, no excuse will be received. I had one man strung up by his thumbs because I caught him filching vegetables from, <clears throat> I believe, Mrs. Noddy's garden. Uh, punishment was not severe, but I applied it strongly and swiftly. And while I, we were on that march, at about the same time, I wrote Julia a letter. And in part, I said, At Jacksonville, one of the prettiest towns that I ever saw, the ladies were all out waving their handkerchiefs, and one of them, I know she must be pretty, made up a bouquet and sent it to me with her name. It was in a terribly disorganized state, when I took it over, but a very great change has taken place. I don't believe there is a more orderly set of troops now in the volunteer service. I have been very strict with them and the men seem to like it. They appreciate that it is all for their own benefit. So in one letter, I praised the beauty of the countryside and the town of Jacksonville, Illinois, and also was able to muse about how pleased I was with how the men had gone from a, an unruly bunch of civilians to a fairly well-disciplined regiment. We were moving 110 or 15 miles across Illinois, uh, more than a thousand men, wagons and baggage, trains and equipage, and it was an impressive sight. Nobody in Illinois had ever seen anything like that. There had never been a state of war for them to see. And here they saw coming down the road and heard us long before they saw us and long after they saw us as we trailed along a thousand men. Officers mounted and wagons and so forth. It was a stirring sight even for myself. It set upon me 
the weight of being in command. I felt for the first time that there was no one to turn to. I had the eagles on my shoulder straps and I had no one to turn to. And it was a heavy matter for me to consider. I was very pleased though, all in all, with how it moved. After we got to uh, Naples, Illinois, well, it just occurred to me that second day out, as we were going through, uh, it wasn't Jacksonville, it was after we passed Jacksonville. We took a break there and there were some stores. Well, some of the men got into some whiskey in the stores and being they thought very clever, they poured their water out and filled them with whiskey. One fellow even had some kind of double boiler coffee pot that had a top and a spout and he, he went to the trouble of melting wax and but between the the carafe pot at the bottom, he put wax and stuck in the top part with the spout and the uh, where the water would go into the coffee. He filled that with milk. The bottom was filled with whiskey. And uh, I saw some men having some difficulty walking. The next time we stopped, I went through the ranks and I had every man uh, give me his canteen and I smelled it. And if it had whiskey, I poured it out and that man was tied to the back of a wagon and forced to march the rest of that day in ropes tied to the back of a wagon. That pretty much stopped the uh, swapping water for whiskey in the canteens. But we got to Naples on, as I recall, Saturday the 8th, see, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th or so, we got to Naples and waited to be ferried across the river, the Illinois River. We were in the northern part of Naples, the town of Naples, which was quite the river port. And we uh, were there for a, a day or so, ferried across the Illinois River and were marching once again toward Quincy and we were called back to Naples. I had a messenger come galloping up and called us back to Naples. We went back to Naples and our orders were to go assist the, I believe it was the 16th Illinois in Missouri that had uh, been surrounded by rebels. And we were to wait for a steamboat to come pick us up and take us uh, across into Missouri where we needed to land waited a couple of days, got word that the steamboat had run aground on a sandbar and couldn't take us. But also at the same time, I got orders to go to Ironton, Missouri and uh, chase uh, rebel guerrillas and uh, Tom Harris, I believe. And we had to get there quickly. So we were ordered to go to the cars and take the train on the Great Western from Naples to uh, Quincy, Illinois. And I'm very proud of my men and, and more than a little amused because when the train got there, it took them 40 minutes to load the entire regiment, a thousand men, wagons, baggage, equipment, everything. They got on that train in 40 minutes. So I think that they were disenfranchised of the thought, if they ever had it, uh, we're soldiers. We don't ride in cattle cars. We don't ride in freight cars. We ride in passenger cars. They were riding in freight cars and cattle cars at that time, and they wasted not a minute getting on the train. I believe they may have had enough of marching to appreciate riding on the train. But while we were waiting for the, the uh, ferry to get us across the Illinois River and go on further on foot, I issued a statement to my troops that I understand would be unthinkable to issue in the regular army. And indeed, 
later on in this war, it will probably be ludicrous to do it then. But you must remember, I'm commanding a thousand men who have only been involved with the military for a couple of months. And this is their first military organized movement under command, and you got to go quickly where you go. And I issued this statement to them. The colonel commanding this regiment deems it his duty at this period of the march to return his thanks to the officers and men composing the command on their general obedience and military discipline. Having for a period of years been accustomed to strict military duties and discipline, he deems it not inappropriate at this time to make a most favorable comparison of this command with that of veteran troops in point of soldierly bearing, general good order, and cheerful execution of commands, making the real necessity of a guard partially unnecessary. Although discipline has been generally enforced, yet the same strictness would have been unnecessary but for a few unruly men, who have caused the regiment to be more strictly under regulation for their misdemeanors. The colonel commanding trusts that a repetition of disorder on their part may never occur again, but that all may prove themselves soldiers fit for duty without any unnecessary means being pursued by him to make them such. And indeed, I didn't, as long as I am in command, have been in command of the 21st Illinois. I would also like to, to speak just a moment about how quickly they learned. As I said, we left at 11 o'clock in the morning on July the 3rd and marched till about 5 o'clock and went into camp. The next, I, I sat on a most unusual tree limb there that first night. It was a black walnut tree and a limb grew horizontal with the ground about the height of the chair that I sit in. And it came straight out from the tree, parallel with the ground, and then crooked up like an arm and made a most comfortable place to sit. And I sat there and wrote my first orders as a commanding officer. And the orderly gave them in verbal manner to the different captains and officers who were to get the orders. One of those orders was that we would move at 6 a.m. the next morning. And at 6 a.m. the next morning, move we did. Now, I do not mind telling you that many of the regiment was not ready. They hadn't prepared any meals, they weren't dressed, but the regiment, such as were dressed, moved. And we marched for about three miles and men were hopping along behind the regiment trying to pull their britches on. Some of them didn't have the britches on. Uh, barefoot, carrying their, their boots and trousers and clothes in each arm. Uh, and we, I stopped after about three miles. I stopped and let all of them catch up with us. And <clears throat> issuing the orders that night, I said the Army will move at 6 a.m. And the next morning, lo, it came to pass that at 6 a.m., the meals had all been prepared, the men had breakfasted, they had cleared the camp, and were lined up in ranks ready to march, most of them. And march we did. And I let the stragglers, the few that were there, not many, catch up with us. And again, the same order issued that evening. We move at 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. And by the third morning, nobody was straggling. Everybody knew at 6 a.m. the Army's going to move and you must move with it. It does not move at your pace. And I have, I, I have a smile when I think of that. And I also smile with pride when I think of how quickly the 21st Illinois came to mold itself into a well-disciplined unit. It's a thrill to see a thousand men marching in ranks. Ranks are tight, 
The step is a, a, a rhythmic tread that can be heard long before you ever see the regiment. I was proud of them, and I'm still proud of them. But that's a, a looking back and reflecting on my very first march as a commanding officer, going from Springfield, Illinois, to Quincy, Illinois, to go into Missouri. And I am proud of the 21st Illinois. I think they will distinguish themselves when it comes to combat, and I relish the possibility of leading those men into battle. At this time, I've said quite enough in reflecting on my first command, my first march, and I think I will take my leave of you. I bid you good day.